Okay, Ernie Warrender, UKIP spokesman for small business. I'm here with Mike Hookham, who's the spokesman for fisheries, and Peter Woods of UK Glass Eels. Now, this is a little known, extremely historic heritage business. And Peter, if you could just fill people in on a bit of history about the business, but where you feel the business is going and how the EU has hampered efforts and what opportunities you think you will see. Gosh, that's, that's a big... How, <laughs> how, how long do you want? Well, I just we, thought I'd get straight across. <laughs> well, this, this, is, this fishery here is part of our, our local culture. I mean, it's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years. And in actual fact, in 1876, there was a parliamentary investigation on, on how the fishing was to be managed. And it was, it was agreed that things should remain the same and that glass eel fishing was a was a privilege of the poor. I see, because it was very much a food of the poor, because where we've been earlier on today, um, over in the forest, we've seen, of course, that the salmon fishery on the Sevens was noted in the Doomsday Book. It goes back a long way, except that the poor people didn't get the salmon, did they? No, I'm afraid the salmon fishing is for the aristocracy, <laughs> and, and, and not, not for the poor people yeah. of, of uh, Wales and, and Gloucestershire. We've come down today, really, to find out the what's going to happen about Brexit, how it is going to affect local businesses. We've heard from several local businesses today, and I'd like to get your take on it. And also, if I could bring Mike in, who is the, an MEP, he sits on the Fisheries Commission, and he sort of has to do battle with our European yes, friends. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, if you, could just give us, basis. <laughs> if you could just give us a bit of background on those battles and how they're going. Well, uh, they're not going so well at the moment, because what we are seeing is uh, the fisheries industry is being sacrificed, I believe, it's, it, I mean, it's personal view, is being sacrificed for the City of London. Uh, I think that they're not looking at the, at the fish, fishing industry, how valuable it is to this country, uh, and I think it's been sacrificed, as I say, for, for the sake of the, of the, uh, the City of London. Uh, I do battle, as you say, uh, on a weekly basis with the other 27 nations, uh, and many of those nations Holland, uh, France, Germany, Spanish, they all fish our waters and it's quite clear when I'm in those committees uh, and it's been, it's been said to me to, uh, face to face that uh, you're not having your waters back, we, we believe this is a valuable industry to us and we're keeping it. Well that's terrific really isn't it? One of the things about the, or little known things about the um, glass eels is there's been a huge investment in schools and education by yourself and one of your colleagues over at the Y Valley Smokery in schools and education. Can you tell us a bit about that please Peter? Yes, so Seven, Seven and Y have uh, been running an education program explaining how the uh, sustainable fishery in, on the Seven, Seven works and we, we culture uh, small eels here for the for the school project. So uh, uh, we produce something between, well, depending what Richard's program is, somewhere between 100 and 200,000 small eels of about five grams in weight, and uh, these are uh, sent to the schools, and uh, they, they have uh, restocking projects all over the UK. Well, this is, I know, in London, Birmingham. It isn't just local, is it? This is the whole. Uh, spectrum over the UK and one of the other big driving things is the conservation side because it was put to me that eels are environment snobs. They will only exist in a decent, they're a good indicator of the state of your rivers and waterways and environmentally you put a lot back in don't you? Yes we've been running these projects uh, for, for seven years now and yeah, you're absolutely right I mean it, it is a, a, a popular belief that eels can live in terribly contaminated waters but no, they need they need they need very good good waters and uh, they are you know they are a good indicator of the status of our environment and the thing is as well it surprised me greatly to find out only within my lifetime they were taking thousands of salmon out of the seven and the Y, and now it's down to a few hundred I believe and that is okay according to DEFRA who really don't seem to have a grasp of the impact that unsustainable fishing has had. Yes, yeah, so well, I haven't been directly involved with the, with, the, with the salmon fishing, but I know from a sort of cultural and social point of view, um, there is a problem in the, in the River Severn where uh, fishermen who have been allowed to take 600 fish per year 
uh, have suddenly found that they are only allowed to take 30 salmon, and those salmon fishing with the lave nets who may be taking um, 10, 20, 30 salmon have suddenly found they can only take one. So, uh, yeah, it is, it's, it's, it's of course, it's a, a big huge social, yeah, it's yeah. also a very big social part of the Forest of Dean, of Gloucester, of Tewkesbury, of these areas. Um, and one of the big issues is, correct me if I'm wrong, there are people queuing up to do business with you from outside the EU, aren't there? Yeah, well, I mean, the reason for getting Mike down here t today was to remind him that there was more water about than, than that was just in the sea. Uh, yeah, we, we have a, you know, a, a fantastic inland fishery here. I mean, it's probably, probably the most valuable inland fishery in, uh, in the UK. Um, and uh, we, we have been running environmental problems, uh, projects all over, all over Europe. Um, but we're, at the moment, we are only allowed to work within the European Union. I mean, Mike, is this something, if I could drag you in, is this something that the EU understand? I mean, do they actually understand the value of this resource, the conservation work that's being done, or is it just a political football, in your opinion? I, I don't believe they don't understand it. I think it is a political football. I think uh, I, something I learned, uh, I, I visited Iceland last year, uh, something I learned in, in the way the Icelandics run things, is they have a partnership between the government, the fishermen, and the scientists. And I think the fishermen have got a huge, huge voice in this. They should be saying, you know, yes, we fish these waters regularly. We know that this, uh, the, the, the glass eels are here, or, or the cods here, the addicts here. Uh, and they should be using, you know, that local knowledge a little bit more than what they do. You know, the scientists come in, they say, well, that's it, we don't believe. Our scientific tests have told us that there isn't the uh, sustainable uh, product here and you can't fish it. Well, I think you should be asking the, the fishermen a little bit more uh, what they believe and what they're seeing and what they're catching. Because that's a true test, is what they are catching on a daily basis. If they're catching a good catch on a daily basis, then you know it's a healthy catch. You know, if it's starting to, to pitch off, well, then you've got a problem. So they should be bringing the fishermen in a little bit more and asking them. Also, one thing was put to me quite vividly when Peter showed me some of the fishing techniques abroad with these for glass eels, for the, the tra well, little trawlers, really, with great big nets. And then the way they're fished here, which is a huge, it's a second job for a lot of people. It's, if you like, the money that gives them a bit of bunts to spend locally. Is that right, Peter? Yes, I mean, the... Uh... <coughs> The, the fishing in, in the UK here, this, this is the most environmentally sensitive method of fishing anywhere in Europe. I mean, people are using hand nets. I mean, if you go to France, I mean, they're using what, large trawlers, 12 meters long, um, uh, and with huge nets. I mean, so, and, and we have a situation where, where we have a set of rules um, which are one size fits all, and, and you know, Managing large trawlers, fishing infinite amounts of, of glass eels, you know, is, you know, is, is one method, and, and we need another method for managing our hand net fishery, our artisan fishery. Yeah, because you told me you have a 1% or less mortality rate. I mean, that's astonishing, isn't it? Yes, we, I mean, 1%, and, and in, in, in France, uh, th those things are improving. I mean, the mortality could be as high as 50%. I mean, but 20%. 20 mortality is, is, is still the norm. And if you're, going, if you're going to have that sort of level of mortality, if you're going to translate these, these uh, live baby eels to other locations, or even use them for, for farming, I mean, the, these sort of mortalities are not acceptable. This, and what we're seeing here, we're seeing almost, this is the, the birth of the industry, because these elvers, these glass eels go off. A lot of other countries, it is a big part of their diet, and these are markets you do not have access to at the moment. Is that right? Yes, the, uh, the, the, we have access to, to some, some of the markets. We have access to markets in the EU, and there's a long tradition of eating um, eels in, in Holland and Sweden and Germany. But, of course, there is a, you know, there is a big market in, in Belarusia, uh, and, uh, and in sort of the more Scandinavian parts of, of Russia, uh, of which we have absolutely no access to at all. Well, look, I'll round this up now by just really, I think both Peter and I are going to ask Mike to go and uh, do what you do very well, Mike. 
you go and put his case very strongly, all right? Well, I think that's what I'll be doing because what I've found today, this is a very interesting, very interesting uh, industry here, something I, I, I have to admit I knew little about. Uh, you know, I'm on a learning curve with Peter. Mm. I knew very little about this. Now, I think a lot of people sitting at home would be exactly the same because when we talk about the fishing industry, we think about trawlers. We think about the, the inshore trawlers, the long distance trawlers. But as Peter says, there is a lot more water than seawater. Uh, and there, there is a, an industry here in the Severn that we've got to look at and we've got to, we've got to, uh, we've got to fight for that and, and, and make sure it survives. And I believe, and I, and I think Peter's the same as me, very optimistic, I think once we're outside of the European Union, I think it's going to grow. I think we can do very, very well. I think Peter's industry will, will grow very, very well. We have to rid ourselves of the shackle of, of the European Union. Yeah, well, Mrs. May and Liam Fox, because I'm sure you're watching this, take note, please. These people need at least some guidance and some direction, please. Okay, thank you ever so much. Peter, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.